Hey, fun friends, it's Anita Cordell. Uh, you can find me at caseyadvocate.com and uh, shoot me a message if you'd like some time or have any specific questions about real estate if you'd like to. I just pulled over after meeting with a buyer and uh, wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I, um, I had to talk about today. So what do you do, uh, what kind of offer do you make if you are a buyer in a seller's market. That's what we're gonna kind of discuss today. Um, I First of all, I know that if you are a buyer and it is a seller's market, it can be very frustrating, can't it not? Um, I, I had a buyer last year, we wrote five offers and she finally uh, took the sixth offer that she did. But five offers, um, because what happens is the inventory is so low and you know, you as a buyer are competing with all these other all these other buyers out there, and so when the inventory is low and there's a whole lot of buyers, you have to set yourself up to be the best buyer possible. And sometimes buyers don't listen to agents. Sometimes their financial situation is not affording them to give above and beyond what they could in order to compete. You know, there's multiple reasons. So let's talk about what you should offer um, a seller in a seller's market. So first of all, um, it's gonna come down to your price point. Um, and the price point is important. The reason why I say that is, say you are pre-approved for a $100,000 home, and there comes a property, and you know, you uh, fall in love with a property that is on the market for $99.5. Uh, you have no wiggle room, basically. And then also, too, if you're wanting the seller to pay for some of your closing costs, so you're kind of not setting yourself up to be the one who gets the home. Because I'm telling you what, for real, people are writing offers for homes um, in a seller's market. They write an offer that's above what they're asking for. So. Case in point, I just had a listing. Um, we're getting ready to close in a few weeks, and we put it up on the market for ninety nine five. We got an offer that was over a hundred thousand. It was priced at one hundred two, and so um, and that offer was the one that was selected. You have to set yourself up to be the chosen one, and so what that means is you've got to um, in a seller's market, you're pretty much going to have to put an offer in above the list price above that and not only that but you're gonna have to look at what the seller is going to net so what that means is if you ask the seller to pay your closing costs or if you ask for them to buy a home warranty plan or if you ask for if you ask for them to accept your contingent offer you are not setting yourself up to be the one that is selected most likely especially if it's in a hot neighborhood or in an, a hot area so what you have to do is is um, if you're pre-approved to a hundred thousand and you want to be the selected person, don't look at a hundred thousand dollar homes. Another thing is um, look look at some homes that are a little bit less than that. Also, um, see if you can and figure out a different um, option for your closing costs. So uh, set yourself up to pay for your closing costs yourself, or put an offer in and. Uh, see if your lender can can lend on maybe a hundred and five thousand and then put a prop uh, put five thousand dollars extra onto the uh, onto the um, the offer so those are all things to think about also too when you're making an offer and you're taking all these things into consideration your price point is not the only thing that a seller is going to look at so many buyers get kind of hung up on what uh, a seller is going to look at as far as price point goes, but there are multiple things that a seller is going to look at and they're going to negotiate on this term. So say for instance, you make an offer and your price is amazing and you know, you've got, you're in that top tier, you know, maybe the top three buyers. Well, um, you've also got to take into consideration the closing date. So say the seller wants in a very aggressive closing date and your lender just can't pull it off and another lender can and they're a thousand dollars less than you. So they make it, made an offer for 104,000 and their closing costs is, or their closing date is aggressive. That seller may pick them over getting a thousand dollars more on you. 
So another thing is to look for, um, are you going to ask for a home warranty plan? It's 450 bucks, $500. It's not huge, but that can be another thing. Also, a huge thing that I'm having happen right now is I'm encouraging buyers to not worry about, um, you know, if, there, if there's a hot market out and there's five or six offers that have come on on the same day and um, I have a buyer that is competing with five or six other people, I might advise them to buy it as is based upon their seller's disclosure and based upon the fact that if there's nothing huge that we can see and we're doing kind of a pre, uh, you know, pre-inspection or what have you, then and they're comfortable with that. Um, say they've got a fixer up her husband and they can kind of look through the, the property and those bells and whistles. You know, you might want to consider doing it as an as is. I've had that one time and they won the bid and there was nothing wrong with the property. There might be other times where you don't want to do that. So you just, you want to take every single situation as, as it stands. One property may not have anything wrong with it and you might be comfortable with doing it as an as is. And that might get you up into that tier one, uh, the chosen one. You know, if, if, if you're not comfortable with that and, and you're not a fixer upper kind of person, then you might not go that route. So there's other things other than your price point that's going to help you. But if you're in a seller's market, you've got to ask your question. You've got to ask the question, how can I be the best buyer possible that I can possibly be? Clean as a whistle. Um, so you're going to look at probably putting an offer in higher than it. You're not going to probably ask for anything or very little. You're going to ask for a very convenient closing date that is good for the seller. You're going to ask for, um, you know, maybe consider not asking for a home warranty plan, those kinds of things. So always talk to your agent. If you have any questions or you need an agent in the Kansas City area, certainly look me up. I'm caseyadvocate.com. If this was helpful to you, give a thumbs up to my video and be sure and watch other videos that are going to come along here in the next um, you know, few weeks or whatever that I'm going to start putting up more on the uh, channel. But hopefully you as a buyer make yourself strong as possible, especially in a seller's market. Um, hope that's helpful for you today. Have a great, great day. I'll talk to you later. Thanks.